Hello, our friends, Hearts Home family, Patreon family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. So we want to share another major experience with a very dear friend of ours uh, that had a life-altering experience, and we have her with us right now. So this is Leah. Leah, say hi. Hi, everybody. It's a pleasure to be with all of you. So Leah has had... Uh, a life-changing experience that I'll let her go into details with, but we've known each other for six years, something like that, six, uh, a long time, seven. Almost seven years in the spring. Wow, seven years, time flies. (laughs) It really does. And so uh, Leah and her dear husband, uh, I definitely think of as brother and sister, and uh, they've been a blessing in my life. And I wanted to just share a little bit of that blessing with you guys. So without further ado, Leah, would you tell us your experience? Yeah, I guess a little part of it, I'll I'll share a background that um, there was a period of time when I, in a very short period of time, was diagnosed with what they told me at the time. And after my surgery was a a life-threatening heart condition, and um, during the midst of tests to confirm certain aspects of that and whether I'd had a stroke, uh, they also discovered a brain tumor. So um, in the course of one day, I found out that I would need open heart surgery and brain surgery. And, um, and I was just one of those, I'll just say typical people. I worked in corporate America. Um, I thought that I would be quite satisfied with, you know, making X amount of dollars and driving this car and all those kind of trappings that especially here in America, we think that that spells success and and a meaningful life. And, um, And we had all that, my husband and I, and suddenly I became very, very ill and um, to the point where they had told me before the heart surgery that there was, you know, a distinct possibility that I might not make it through the surgery because of the brain tumor. And um, so during the course of these events, I I had a near-death experience. I, I, I know it's kind of a cliche to say that because I always say, if you are passed on for 38 minutes, I call it an after death experience uh, because you're there. And in my case, you know, told that I would be coming back. And I share the illness because one of the aspects of it was that, um, as I said, prior to that, my life had been very focused on all the things that we in Western culture are taught are the things that we're supposed to seek and desire and that will bring us great happiness. And uh, though we have those things and a measure of happiness within a, you know, moments after a trip to the emergency room, it was all taken away. And then later my life was taken away, um, but given back to me when I was sent back here uh, with a divine purpose. We all have a divine purpose purpose I, I I could see that and I would say that uh, and the reason I preface the illness is I had been very very ill for a long time and some of the surgeries I had two heart surgeries and as I said the brain surgery with severe complications following the brain surgery and uh, I had been so ill I had a do not resuscitate order which I made my husband practice saying, no, do not resuscitate her because when you're chronically ill, there can come a point where you just, you don't want to suffer anymore. And I was definitely at that point. And I can't say, you know, I had read some books and like many people, I thought, oh, I'm not afraid to die. And I had a general concept of, you know, what I thought might happen after death. And of course, all of that got blown apart on September 6th in 2013 and uh, when I had a seizure and my husband rushed me to the hospital and I can tell you a couple of things um, maybe our brothers and sisters and the folks in the audience might appreciate one of the things I was shown is that and we should all take great comfort in is that all of us 
whether it's a week or an hour or a month or a year, um, that spirit that dwells within us, it's like a fruit, you know, and when it's ripe and it's ready, we get called in so many ways and brought back into that relationship. And uh, in my case, because I had told my husband not to uh, do the resuscitation, when we got there, um, it was it was very bad. And uh, in fact, ironically, one of the nurse, uh, one of the phlebotomists that came in to draw my blood happened to be someone I knew well from my many visits, you know, to LabCorp, getting my blood tested. And she drew the blood and uh, had this terrible look on her face. And my husband was very shocked and said, what is it? And she said, I can't tell you or I'll lose my job. And he said, come on. She won't mind myself. Her name's Shirley. He said, come on, Shirley. We're friends. And I was in and out of semi-consciousness at this point and uh she held up the the syringe that she had drawn and it was just plasma there was no red blood cells left and my skin had kind of turned turned gray and the veins looked kind of blackish and it's an interesting thing i i often when the subject comes up will tell people it is is a very surreal reality when you know that you have maybe two, maybe three breaths left. We take our breath, the sacred thing, our breath, so for granted. It's always there for us, always serving us. And when it's going away, and you know, because I was laboring very hard to breathe, and when you know that, oh my God, I am going to be at that last breath and I will know what's on the other side of that last breath and I'd like to say I was very brave and noble and I in all honesty you know the few times I've told this story um, I always relate it to that feeling you have when you almost get in a car accident and your adrenaline's pumping and you're anxious and I felt that feeling and then so accompanying my fear I felt shame that I felt that feeling and so I was laying, you know, in the emergency room and going, thinking to myself, I'm going to die afraid and anxious and ashamed. And the minute I had that thought, I could feel a hand just rest itself very gently on my right shoulder from behind. And I didn't know it, but at the time, that is when I breathed my last breath. Because this, this beautiful hand pulled me back into this embrace. Sorry, it still gives me goosebumps when I remember it. And still real emotional. Um, incidentally, I was out of this pain and this agony and this fear and trepidation that I had. And I was virtually swallowed up into this light and it isn't the way that we humans conceive light it was alive um it was like an ocean because you were in it and it was through you and all around you and it was the purest love purest truth um and bliss that you can imagine and i guess i we humans find that hard to imagine i i guess you know um and i just kind of wallowed in it and, and an interesting thing that i can say is that a couple of things happened to me on this journey and um one was that instantly when you're in that place i could see what we are what you, Michael and Cindy, what you guys are, what we all are on this earth, because we're just wearing these, you know, these avatar bodies. And we're either just beautiful, crystalline light. We are fractals of source, you know, that's why we're called children of God. We are that holographic fractal of this living source of all things. And when we shed that outer shell, it's like breathing a fresh air, taking off a pair of shoes that are too tight. All of those things are true. But what I found so amazing was that because you're immersed 
in this ether, in the Akashic field, all truth is instantly available to you. It's it's in you and through you. Like things that I had long wondered about my whole life, I knew them instantly. I knew who and what we were and what our purpose was instantly. It, it's just all knowing. And, I, and I'll say for some of our listeners who may have been like I was, I was raised very, very traditional um, evangelical Christian background. And unfortunately, some sects of Christianity can be a little bit judgmental of other folks. <laughs> and I was one of those people. And I will tell you, I found myself in this beautiful living garden and not living as we would think of a garden but these were sentient beings that you could communicate with and who were loving you and plants and colors that aren't of this plane and um in my case my guru who came to me was in the form of isa also known as jesus and um because that's who i was comfortable with and identified with because it can be different for anyone But um, one of the most profound things that was laid on my heart to share was that while I'm in this beautiful, heavenly, sublime place, I was asked, which of these do you believe that I love the most and cherish the most? Which is the most beautiful in my garden? And I instantly could be in a desert and seeing desert cactus or a lily in the shade of a pond and I instantly I said all of them Lord all of them and this is all happening in a telepathic way and I got the confirmation that that is correct and so it's true with all things not just the flowers and the trees and these our beautiful cousins and all the other sentient creatures we share this earth with but each other especially you know and to let each person take their path on that mountain to reach that the peak you know um our great spirit our father the all mother gaia so much wiser than us and so that just was so deeply imprinted in my heart and along with one other thing that I'd always grown up with um you know folks who can relate to a a biblical Christian upbringing will identify with a scripture that's pretty famous it says behold I stand at the door knock and it was so cool I have to say (laughs) because I was told I'm knocking from the inside that's what most people don't know you know because the kingdom of heaven is within us and i've since then come to an absolute certain certainty of knowledge that that's all that's needed you know is to begin that journey into your own heart because through our dna which holds all the stories of all our past lives and experiences that truth is threaded through our heart it is the buried treasure and taking that quiet time to go into that place we can all be assured of finding that and you know i was told i would come back and um back to my story about the do not resuscitate i had uh, as i said i made my husband practice it and Suddenly, very suddenly, I'm out of this just blissful, beautiful, I said it's like a a sea of light that's made of love. And I'm back in the room. I can see my body in the bed. And I find myself right next to, like I say myself, in my consciousness, right next to my husband's left ear. And there's a nurse hollering at him and yelling, you know, Mr. Winter, Mr. Winter, do you want us to honor the DNR? We have to know right now. She's yelling. And my husband had his head bowed uh, and he was crying. And I was whispering in his ear and I was saying, 
say yes, say yes. And here's the man who I may practice saying, no, don't do anything. And as I whispered uh, the second time, he just looked up and he said, yes, do everything you can. And um, so it was probably, I want to say, I was surprised how long I was in the hospital because I guess I wasn't awake for several days. But um, I finally came due several days later and my husband said, you have been laying in this bed, just rambling along, talking to God. And, um, and after that, you know, several incredible, I guess would be the only way to describe them, which I guess were confirmation for me. I always tell people, too, I wasn't given any hallucinogenic drugs, no painkillers, nothing of that nature when I went into the emergency room that night. And, um, and it did, yeah, it, it completely completely changed my life and how could it not and I came back having I don't want to say access we all have the access to it but still having this very strong connection to that field and to that wisdom and um, just as an example which I just hear a lot of people ask about it so I'll share it Um, we often hear about predictive programming and why do they have to tell us the things that they're they're planning for us and there's all kinds of answers out there and I was shown the answer and I was like well of course that makes perfect sense and the reason was you know they may say it's for their karma I've heard that kind of story oh they want to reduce their karma we are fractals of source prime and creator of God and we are endowed with free will and all that goes with that yet we don't know that and we've surrendered it and they I say they just generally so this was just one of the truths revealed to me that they must have our permission because we have free will and we must choose it and what we don't understand is maybe we turn on a television show or maybe we pay our money to go see a movie or we clap along or sing along with lyrics we are acquiescing and giving our agreement and and that's it's a spiritual thing and it's kind of you know us going okay yeah we know and it's okay um we give our acquiescence we acquiesce it to it and so that and just you know i came back being the person who never wanted to take a math class to suddenly not only loving but having a deep understanding of physics because I could see it. I could see that we are, like Tesla said, everything is energy, frequency, and vibration, including us, including our thoughts. And I don't know if we appreciate that sometimes, you know, that even the thoughts we think And the emotions we feel carry very strong vibrational energies that impact the field. So we're constantly just creating this spiritual ecosystem. And then we'll wonder why this may happen or that. So that's why it's very important. You know, I came back understanding how really important it is to nurture ourselves um, and just be in the place of love for others. And, and to top it off, it was funny. I, uh, a few days later, one of the, the doctors came and sat on my bed, and he was just looking at me, and he said, uh, I said, can I help you? And he said, well, I was one of the people on your surgery team. And I said, well, thank you. And he said, I just wanted to look at you because I, I don't think you realize that I was 52 at the time this happened. And he said, every day that you have stayed alive, you have won the lottery. So I thought, you know, I was kept here, as we all are here, to have this journey and experience this realization of who and what we truly are. So I'm happy that you invited me. I hope I didn't ramble too long because it's... Um, no, not at all. It's it's a pleasure to hear this story. And, uh, you know, it just makes my heart um, just swell with love for you, too, because you know how much I love you. And it's been a blessing to have you guys in my life. You know, 
Leah, I just, I just have to say, I think this information is so important for people right now. And the way you put it forth is very touching. And I think it definitely speaks to the heart in so many ways. And it gives people a level of peace. And even while you were talking, it's like the idea that you could see the the physics and you had that deep understanding. It's like you knew everything. You knew the wisdom. And we all do. It's all there. It's just buried under these layers of, you know, forgetting who and what we really are. Yeah. It's it's so it's wonderful. Accessible to all of us. Yes, I love that. And we all have the option where we can open our hearts and receive it. And one person, the last person we talked with who had this experience, she kind of viewed it as um, we're in a filter. You know, our bodies are a filter. And when we are outside of these bodies, that's when we have more access to that loving light. Um, Whereas I see our human, oh, so true. yes, it's very true. I felt that, and I felt it when you were talking too, because this type of energy, when you brush with love so closely, as close as you did, it's like I can feel it kind of oozing out of that person. So I always get teary, you know, um, because of the healing. So I just really want to say a deep, profound you know that, thank, thank you. you. I'm sorry to interrupt you. And that's why the those that believe they rule this world currently strive so hard to keep us in that place of stress and fear mm -hmm. because our whole purpose, I promise everyone, you know what I tell, I have this image, it's that picture a whole incubator full of eggs and they're all under this warm glowing light and each one of those eggs, each one of those little chicks, if you consider that as an analogy for self-realization of who and what we're here for because we do have a purpose and that's the big thing that people I my heart wants other people's hearts because we all have the same heart that's the other thing you know one candle can light a thousand other candles without losing its light and we become the one light and so one chick might be you know we're all pecking away at the shell you know, and some might awaken a little earlier and they want to help others and they may do this and there may be some stubborn ones that it might take them a little bit longer. But we're all, we are all on the same journey. If I can, if I can just share one little story, I don't know if we have time, but. Oh, please. That yeah. was a confirmation. Well, there were several really not what I would ever dream in my life. You know, I can let your audience know. I was never a woo-woo person. I worked in corporate America and, you know, thought that making six figures was the be-all, end-all, and, you know, that was success. So I, so I use that term because that's how spiritual people often get labeled. And I was, like, the furthest away from that you could be. And after this horrible thing with the brain swelling and um, having passed away and come back, I couldn't drive. Uh, I had to get approval to get my license again and all that kind of thing. And so it was a big event for me when I was able to drive to the mall. And I thought, we need it. We happen to need a vacuum. And I, I told my husband, I was very proud of myself. He was at work and I said, I am going to drive to the mall by myself and I'm going to get a vacuum. And uh, I drove to the mall, went into the department store, went up to the counter in the appliance department. And there was a woman in her late 50s, I'm going to say, um, and I asked her about the vacuum on sale, and she said, oh, honey, I'm so sorry. We, we just sold the last one. And I was in such a blissed out state, because this was like, you know, 12 weeks after my journey through this veil, and so everything was just meant to be in my world. So I was like, yeah, it's fine, it's okay. And she goes, you know what? let me just go look in the back for you. We might, hit, let me just look. And I said, okay. And so off she trots to the back and she comes back with the vacuum I wanted. And she goes, wouldn't you know, there was one last vacuum kind of tucked away in the back there. And I said, that's amazing. And 
So I'd had, you know, as I said, two heart surgeries and brain surgery and stuff in a very short period of time. And so I was trying to get back in shape. And I asked this woman, I said, do you mind? I'm going to take a stroll to the end of the mall and back, and then I'll pick my vacuum. Is that okay with you? And she said, oh, sure. And while we were talking, I noticed she had this beautiful necklace on, um, very unique, uh, with a really unusual looking stone in it. And I was very forward, actually. I reached over the counter and I touched her necklace and I said, that is just the most beautiful necklace. And she was very flattered. And she said, oh, thank you. It's from my son. And I said, well, thank you again for babysitting my vacuum. I'll be back soon as I can get to the end of the mall and back. And I had become accustomed to keeping a little journal in my purse because just little revelations from God and insights would come and I'd always drop them down and so I go down to the end of the mall and there's a store I don't think they're around anymore but I think it was Earthborn I think it might have been called Earthbound and I thought oh I'll go browse through there and this had never happened to me in my life (laughs) I have to preface that I'm in the store and I'm looking at stuff and as clear as you and I are hearing each other I hear a young man's voice clear as day in my right ear um, I happen to be on the aisle with elephants and I hear this young man say buy this elephant and I looked around and I thought did I just I looked around to see if there was somebody there and I'm like okay that was weird and, um, and then I hear it again buy this elephant And my instant thought, to be honest with you and your audience, is I thought, oh my gosh, I have permanent brain damage. I'm having an auditory hallucination because it was so real. And I thought, I'm leaving the store. And when I turn to leave this hill, the voice tells me again, buy this elephant. It's for my mother. And it was so clear. I thought, okay, you know what? I'm going to buy this because maybe it'll make the voice go away. So like a crazy person, I go up to the counter with this little adorable purple elephant and I sit it on the counter and um, they have those big comfy chairs at the mall. I said, okay, I need to collect myself because I intuitively knew I was somehow supposed to give it to the woman um, at the department store. I thought, oh my God, I'm crazy crazy there's no way I'm going to do this and so I sat down and got my little journal out and it was the first time um I guess they call it um automatic writing suddenly my hand began writing and I could sense because I it sounds crazy but I felt like I was intruding to read it because it was very intense very automatic I had no control of it and it was a letter to this person's mother And I could sense that it was extremely personal and very vital to her immediate well-being, emotionally and physically, that she get this letter. And my hand stopped writing, and I'm thinking, I am not going to a perfect stranger and giving them a letter (laughs) Um, and an elephant. And as I'm thinking that, my hand flew up to the top of the page and wrote the name John very rapidly and circled it several times with three exclamation points and I heard the young man's voice again say my name is John I know my name and my mother knows I'll never forget it (laughs) and my mother knows my name and I was like and I thought about calling my husband like I need to go back to the hospital (laughs) because I really did think I'm I'm crazy now in fact if I didn't have to get my to be honest, if I didn't have to get my vacuum, I would not, I would have just left the mall. So I had a little poncho on, and I here I have my little brown bag with an elephant in it, and I have this note, this letter tucked into my poncho, and I'm walking back to Sears. I'm like, oh, my Lord, I don't, because I didn't have any trust at that time. Nothing like that had ever happened to me. And... Um, so I get there and she's like, oh, I was wondering what happened to you. And so I thought, okay, I'll just give her the elephant and get out of here. There's no way I'm giving her um, this letter with the name John 
on on it because my mind was going through all the letters of the alphabet, all the conceivable names from A to Z. And I thought, there's just no way I'm not going to embarrass myself like this, but I will give her the elephant. So I sat the little elephant on the counter. I said, this is for you. And she looked at me kind of oddly. And um, she said, for me, you know, because we were strangers. And I said, yeah. And I made up a fib. I said, you know, I said, you went to all that trouble going to the back warehouse there to get the vacuum. I just wanted to say thank you to you. And uh, she opens up. So this is a woman standing in the middle of the appliance department at Sears. She opens up the little brown bag and looks in, and she just starts crying, and I mean bawling, and tears are just staining the counter, and she looks up at me and says, how did you know? I've collected elephants since I was a little girl, and her voice is breaking, and I knew then that I had to tell her, and... I said, and again, to kind of, again, I don't know why I was so hesitant, but I again complimented her. I said, I don't know. I said, that really is a beautiful necklace. And then she says to me, it was, my son was wearing it when he died and it was his most cherished thing and I'll never take it off. And so that's when I reached into my pocket and um, I said, I have to tell you the truth. This isn't from me, it's from your son. I said, do you mind telling me what's your son's name? And she, you know, looked me right in the face and she said, John. And every cell in my body just was on fire with shock and awe. And I started crying too. So we're both crying here now in the middle of the department store. And I said, ma'am, this is from your son. She kind of looked me crazy for a second. I said, he's the one that told me to pick out this elephant for you. And I said, and here's a letter from him. And so I hand her this note that has the name John circled three times boldly at the top. And, of course, she had to excuse herself from the, the counter. And um, for about the space of a year, I'm going to say, after my near-death experience, this happened, I finally got comfortable with it because it would happen fairly regularly. And um, and I, all I could assume, which falls in line with everything we're talking about, is that, you know, we're like a radio and we're tuned to frequencies. And so having been on that other side, I was able, or one with the right intentions and vibration was able to communicate with me to get this message of love to his mother and as I said for about somewhere around a year nine months or a year that would happen fairly regularly and uh, so I ultimately became comfortable with it but just miraculous things whether it's with little living creatures you know that would come to me or like what happened with this woman god bless her um at the mall and um and i realized though you know we're just here that was part of my service at that time but it goes on and gosh i i really just want to speak directly from my soul and my heart the hearts and souls of every member of your family every listener i promise you i promise you that love inside your heart, that truth that dwells in your being, that spark that animates life in you and your consciousness that has you listening to this, it is divine. And you are divine. We are. And we are called for this time to be here. We're called to connect and remain strong and to abide in this love and light because we are the light, you know? One little candle can light up a big dark room, and we're all candles. And so I just, again, thank you so much for <laughs> indulging me. That is just such a special memory of mine that that happened. And that that young man, I can, it's funny, I always say if I had to do a voice test where I had to listen to 10 different young men to this day, I could still recognize his voice. And he was so determined that I was going to do this for his mother. You know, and uh, and that's what we're all here to do in 
one way or another, we're all just amazing spirits with qualities and abilities that we cannot even begin to comprehend. And as we slowly let go of these false beliefs we've been indoctrinated in into this world and to accept ourselves and nurture that light inside, incredible things happen. And, and I just want to thank you guys because the work you do is so wonderful. And I can tell your listeners that, I don't know, um, the way that we met is I used to watch um, Michael Channel and... Boy, the Spirit of God just laid it on me because he just happened to be passing Brown through our part of the country. And I told my husband, we have to invite him to come here and he can stay as long as he needs to, you know, just on his journey. And, and oh, I just want to say thank you so much. And I've been so much further blessed by your beautiful, beautiful partner. You guys are just, you are, you just light up my heart. And I'm sure as you do all your listeners, and I just want to thank you. Thank you so, so much. Well, thank you, Leah. And thank you for taking me in and, you know, taking us all into your your story and your energy. Mm-hmm. And it's it's just so, so important for this time for people to understand this. And thank, thank you for you. sharing. Absolutely. You are much like and if you don't mind i would just like to put it out there for everybody that hears this to put positive energies and prayers for neil and neil is the other half of leah and neil has been going through a lot of physical challenges and so uh if everybody would put their positive intentions for healing and and positive energy and love light to surround both of them uh, as these two people are truly uh, my brother and sister and both of our brother and sister and we love them as much as any oh, thank you so much you too and yes anytime anywhere anything you guys you know we're here for you and I thank everybody for praying my husband is a a beautiful special very beautiful light and all he's going through is not even one bit tarnished that light. It's just illuminated it further. But uh, thank you so much. So thank you guys for taking this journey with us. As always, much love and namaste. Namaste. Namaste.